Traps weren't triggered, so it should still be here. Odd. You honored our agreement and waited here until we returned. As such, I'll hold up my end and give you another mechanical part. Keep it safe. I'm not giving you another one if you lose it. Glad you're satisfied. If you want more mechanical parts, Take us deeper into the contaminated region. I want to see what happened there. What caused the Avidya forest to become like this? <laughs> so this is the contaminated region that everyone's been talking about. Oh, it definitely looks different from normal. It's like... really creepy and suffocating. Do you feel unwell at all? Good. It's as I predicted. Elemental power confers a degree of resistance against the contaminated region's influence. How do you know that? I haven't entered the contaminated region for a proper investigation but I've conducted quite a few controlled experiments. My observations during our time here have all but confirmed my hypothesis. Look at these flowers. How are they different from normal? This flower species is formally known as the Sumeru Rose, but it is also known as the Ley Line Lodestar. They're sensitive to ley lines and emit varying amounts of light in response. Excessive brightness indicates a dangerous level of ley line activity in the surrounding area. From the looks of things, the ley lines around here are already out of control. You're saying the contamination here is coming from ley lines? I can't confirm that right now, but I think that is the case. Let's take another look around and see if we can discover more clues. This contaminated region currently appears to have a critical efflux of ley line energy, which is probably the root cause of the patient's cognitive disturbances. Some animals have keen awareness. They sensed something abnormal in this area and fled. Leaky ley line sure can cause a lot of damage, huh? Like how plants have preferred growth conditions, we also gradually habituate to our surrounding environment. Climate, temperature, humidity, intensity of ley line energies. When people live under fixed conditions, they reach a sort of homeostasis with their environment. This equilibrium is broken when the surrounding environment abruptly changes, causing people's bodies to react in abnormal ways. If normal fluctuations in temperature occur, then our bodies automatically adjust. However, the average person cannot adapt to changes in ley line energy, and so they fall ill. Then why are we okay? I'm not sure why you are, but he and I are fine because our elemental capabilities allow us to adapt to this kind of change. Of course, it's not a good idea to spend too much time in areas with concentrated ley line energy. The only one who can freely traverse this place is probably the mechanical crab. That's about it for the investigation. Help me find an open space. I want to test something. Yeah. 
Environment, no wind. Target parameters, normal. Setup complete. Excellent. Looks like it's working. What's this? A purification device that I made. It can absorb excess ley line energy and temporarily stabilize an area. What a neat thing! Let's set up more and cover the entire region! I wouldn't mind if that would actually work. Unfortunately, once this contamination is present, it isn't something that a few purification devices can fix. The purification devices have their limits. At best, they can only prevent the contaminated region from expanding temporarily. If we want to permanently eradicate the contamination from the ley line effluence, we'll need to tackle the source. That's right. Huh? The mechanical crab is acting a little strange. Something's approaching. So that's it. Now that the ley line energy has stabilized, the monsters that had left are starting to return. Get rid of them quickly. Don't let them get close to the purification device. Injuries are superficial. Don't move, I'll patch you up. Who are you all? What happened to those mechanical monsters? Don't worry, we took care of them. Oh, good. <laughs> That's uh, good. Uh, it's a monster! Hurry, attack it! How do we explain this? Uh, Krabby here isn't a bad guy. It heard you shouting for help and brought us here to rescue you. It's faking it. It has to be. Maybe it's going to partner up with the other mechanical monsters and kill me. Do you know what's inside the forest? It's all... It's, it's all crawling with mechanical freaks. I just came here to pick herbs. But I accidentally went to the contaminated region and almost died. Hmm. I gotta get out of here. 
Ah, oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I have to escape. <laughs> Be careful. These mechanical life forms are up to no good. It'd be best if you stayed far, far away from them. Ugh, no wonder the Academia wanted to completely ban the existence of mechanical life forms. Ugh, those things should be annihilated! Uh, are you okay? His inarticulate speech and bodily tremors indicate psyche disruption. He's been inside the contaminated region for too long. We've purified the ley line energy over there. Follow this path out and you'll soon see the village. At that point, someone will bring him to Kale for help. I already prepared medication that will return him to normal. Hmm. So you think you did a good job and want a part as your reward? It's so hard to understand. All right, regardless of what you're thinking, you did some real good this time. That's why I'll give you another mechanical part. Need any help with it? Guess not. Well, make sure to hang on to it. <sighs> what was going through your owner's mind when he made you, I wonder? You're like a giant mechanical crab on the outside and a fluffy little hamster on the inside. And also... How do you feel about that person saying that you're as evil as the other mechanical life forms? Okay, it definitely doesn't understand you. It seems like it possesses limited understanding only towards matters related to mechanical components. Help others to get parts. That's probably its thought process. As for why it, or rather its owner, is collecting so many components, I'm not sure. It's getting late. So let's set up camp for the night. We'll explore further tomorrow, after a night's rest. Hey, over here! Come on, you big lummox, raise your head and look up! Let's set up camp here. All right, Paimon also thinks it's a good spot. Oh, any particular reason? This place is perfect to put up a big tent. We can also set up a cooking pot and cook tons of delicious food. You're not wrong, but the primary reason for choosing this place is because its higher elevation keeps us away from the water vapor below. Rainforests are very wet. You should always be careful when spending the night in damp places. For the next tasks at hand, let's divide and conquer. I'll set up the tent, you'll be in charge of making the fire, and Paimon will forage for edibles nearby. Leave it to Paimon. Paimon's a pro. I'm not expecting that much. Just do what you can. That's right. You can use rushes to start a fire in the wilderness. Their piths are relatively dry and can be readily set aflame. The downside is that they produce a lot of smoke. Traveler, Tainari, Paimon couldn't find any food. Paimon didn't know that Rainforest had so many interesting plants until we came here. They were all sort of weird looking mushrooms, but Paimon didn't know which ones were edible. Paimon also saw wild berries on the ground. And Paimon was going to fly over and pick them up, but the death leaves on top suddenly started moving. It freaked Paimon out. Those were probably dead leaf butterflies. They camouflage as dead leaves to evade predators. My guess is that they mistook you for a bird when you flew over, so they fled. <laughs> Little did they know that you were more scared than they were. Never mind. The tent's up, so you two go rest. I'll forage for food. Oh, you found some already. Hey! Paimon understands it this time! It wants mechanical parts again! Sorry, no part this time. That task wasn't important enough. If every little thing resulted in a reward, 
then it might start to take advantage of the system. I'll note little things like this and give a cumulative reward at a later time. Ahem, <clears throat> that is one reason. It looks really sad. <sighs> After some further thought, it might come up with some weird misunderstanding if I don't give it something. All right, here's another for you. I'm off to prepare dinner. We'll take shifts on lookout duty tonight. You two can sleep first. I'll wake you up later. We need lookouts? Yes. Even though most animals fled because of the ley lines, we can't completely let down our guard. It's settled then. I'll set up some pest repelling devices so poisonous insects don't come crawling into the tent. Have a good night. Not too good, though. Sleepy. Uh, is this because of the ley lines? It's been a while since we camped outside like this. <laughs> this feels like when we just started adventuring together. <sighs> Nighty night. Hmm? You're awake earlier than I expected. Did you sleep well? You have to maintain constant vigilance in dangerous places like this. Yawning all the time like that is no good. If you can't stay awake, it's okay. Go sleep some more. I'm not tired yet. Really? You don't need to push yourself. I'm used to staying up all night because many plant and animal species can only be observed during nighttime. Speaking of which, have you seen the crab? It was scampering around over there just now, but I don't know where it went. So you can tell. My suspicion is less towards the crab and more directed to its unrevealed owner. A ley line effluence of this magnitude occurred without any warning. Someone probably disrupted the natural flow of the ley lines. Until we fully understand the situation, take extra caution. The Academia has banned mechanical life-form research for years, so the origin of these creatures is very s- Topics related to mechanical life-forms were popular in the Spontama for a time. Some of my juniors had also thrown themselves into such research. They proposed an intriguing idea. Use our knowledge to create a new and practical life-form that could help humanity conquer nature. However, no matter which modules or parts are installed, a machine is innately a construct that receives and executes commands. They can never possess self-awareness like us or other living organisms. In their pursuit to discover the differences between mechanical and biological life forms, zealous researchers performed unregulated vivisections and other absurdly cruel experiments on animals. Research on mechanical life forms was thus banned. The irony is that the researchers became even more impetuous afterward. Who knows? Maybe this subject will be unbanned in a few years. Hmm. That's a difficult question to answer. I'm interested in the topic of mechanical life, but I don't like the researchers' attitudes. It's just my personal opinion. My ancestors and the Veluka Shuna of the desert coexisted together and supported one another. The bloodline of my people was born from this symbiotic relationship. So to me, all life is important. To understand life, you must first respect it. Life is not an expendable commodity, and knowledge should not be wielded like a scepter. These are the points of contention I have with some researchers, and why I left the Academia. By placing yourself above other life forms, what kind of results do you expect to get from researching pure life with impure intentions? Really? Well, I'm glad to hear it. 
coffee. Did you prepare this for us? All right. Seeing that you're working so hard to help out, I'll give you another part. You're not planning on using it. Many of your own parts are critically degraded, and you're running low on power. All right. Suit yourself. Oh, and thanks for the coffee, but I'm about to go to sleep. Leave it with him. The Night Watch is yours. Stay safe. Traveler and Paimon. Mm. Quick question. Do you feel off at all? Mm, me too. The farther in we go, the closer we get to the source of the ley line effluence. We'll be heading out earlier today. I'll take down the tent. Is there something we can do? Extinguish our fire so we don't set the entire forest aflame. Also, retrieve the pest repelling devices from last night. We don't want to affect the ecosystem here. Take care of the fire! All right. Let's meet back here later. All right. It's about time to head out. As we go further in, we may encounter more Berserk machines. The effects of the ley lines will also increase. If you're struggling, it would be wise to avoid conflict. Try to conserve as much energy as possible until we reach the source of the contamination. Hey there! I saw you two helping Nilu move some stuff. Are you two also here for the celebration event? You got it! My name is Raycar. Nadia and I are this theater's prop engineers. I also help out with some other tasks like housekeeping. The little ones causing a ruckus are my children, Sorin and Abi. I hope they aren't bothering you. They always get really excited every time we hold a celebration event. Yes, they are. Everyone here takes great care of them. There's good work here, the pay's always on time, and Nilu and the others will often volunteer to play with the kids. I'm quite content with this current way of life. Um, do you mean your life wasn't nearly as good before? <laughs> it's all right. It's all water under the bridge now. My husband and I were both adventurers, but he passed away from an accident. Material struggles can always be overcome, but ever since then... I haven't been able to spend much of my energy on anything else, but I still consider myself lucky. Mr. Zubair has helped me a lot, 
And the atmosphere here is tolerant and kind. Sorry for bringing up such sad memories. Oh, it's all right. I don't mind. Once the event starts, you'll be able to see for yourself the kind of atmosphere I was talking about. Ah, a newcomer. Doesn't look too bright. Hey! Talk about judging a book by its cover! You, on the other hand... Hmm... You're a special one. How would you describe the concept of art? Mere curiosity is all. It makes no difference whether you answer or not. So that's what you think, hmm? Unremarkable. Better than an average person's thoughts, but nothing exceptional. Is art a product that we create and bring forth? Or is it a naturally existing resource? I, for one, believe it to be the latter. Uh, Paimon doesn't follow. I've been staying here for a long time. On occasion, I'd assist them in penning lines of dialogue. But most of my time, I just stand back and watch. I prefer to abstain from writing, as it spoils the viewing experience. The existence of the theater, of Nilu, and of humanity itself. All of these can be considered as forms of art. It is not some intangible construct beyond the horizon. How does that have anything to do with us? Let me ask you this. What do you think is the meaning of art? <laughs> I suppose that question was a little too difficult for you. To chance upon a spark of inspiration. I have been closely observing you, the players on the stage, and those watching in the audience. Art is already all around us. Hello. What? Who are you? You can't just go on the stage as you please. Ah, I see. Sorry for my overreaction. I'm just, uh, making a prop. No time for chit-chat. Is that embroidery? No. Well, yes, but not really it's a prop. It's just, uh, some fabric. An ordinary piece of fabric that we use in a show. Uh, sorry. I really do need to focus and start working on it. What an oddball. Is prop making something to be that jumpy about? Oh well, it's none of our business. Look, Neil is back! Let's meet up with her. The event's probably about to start. Sorry for the wait. Preparations for the celebration are finally done. I'll call everyone over, and then we can start. Let us give you a hand. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe we really should have prepared a gift. Then we could also be a part of the exchange. As it is, all we can do is wait and watch. Um, maybe we shouldn't do this after all. I didn't do that great of a job. And who would even like it? Oh, don't think like that. Remember our promise? We're going to give everyone a pleasant surprise. And besides, you've never attended a celebration event before, so this will be a great opportunity. Everyone will love you. I'm still... not really sure about this. There's nothing to be worried about. Just take a step forward and give yourself a chance. There aren't any scary people here, right? Right. Huh. Alright. Maybe this will help. Everyone, over here! Inaya has something great to tell you all! W wait wait I've already said that I'm not ready yet! Ah, uh, what should I say? Take it easy and relax. Deep breath, in and out. Once you've taken a long exhale, calmly tell everyone what you want to say. If you don't say anything, then all the hard work we put into embroidery practice would have gone to waste. Using it as a gift though? It really isn't that good. So when Inaya was talking about making a prop, she was actually preparing a present. 
Yeah, it feels like she still doesn't really see herself as part of this community. But it looks like Milu's trying to ease her through. Actually, Hinaya had prepared a special present for everyone before the celebration kicked off. Woohoo! We're gonna get our first present from Miss Hinaya! Pipe down! The louder you all are, the more nervous she'll become! You've worked on it for so long, so have some confidence. Don't be afraid. You've got this! Uh... Is Mr. Zubair here? Sheikh Zubair, this is an urgent notice from the Academia. This celebration, or whatever it is, must stop at once. What a condescending guy. What's his deal? Since Zubair Theater has long violated the Academia's policies and orders, we have decided to demolish it. As its manager, you must halt all operations and dismiss all staff members within 30 days, after which you will report to the Academia for further punishment. Why? Why force us to do this all of a sudden? Little girl, this is not the first time you've been issued a warning. I didn't hear anything about demolition the last time I asked, and now I suddenly only have 30 days? We have more shows planned, but it's impossible to do anything in just 30 days. How am I supposed to explain this to my customers and staff? That issue is of no concern to me, Mr. Zubair. You seem to understand the situation quite clearly. Perhaps you can reflect on the reasons why you have failed to prepare for the scenario in advance. Demolition? Why do they want to demolish this place? The Academia has never liked us, and they've never respected our work. To them, what we do is all a waste of time. This isn't the first time they've come by. They had asked us several times in the past to improve the quality of our performances by only putting on shows they consider to be sufficiently intellectual. But our audience isn't the Academia. It's the people of the Grand Bazaar. If our shows are too difficult to understand, or too removed from everyday life, nobody would watch them anymore. Changing our content would not only mean turning our backs on our vision, it would also directly lead to the loss of our livelihoods. Yeah, the theater is very important to each and every one of us. Hmm, the way they're doing things is so scummy! But... I also don't know how we can stop them. I do not wish to explain everything again from the beginning. Time is of the essence, so you should act with haste instead of asking frivolous questions. But none of us plan to accept this. Such an abrupt notice is contrary to established policy. Ask whoever you will. The answer will remain the same. We have already given you sufficient notice. Enough! Does your audacity know no limits, father? Huh? Father? Their family? What academia? This is all because you don't like Zubair Theater. You're just using the academia's name to threaten us. Let me tell you. Even if you manage to tear down this place, nothing is going to change. You've always been awful. But even I never thought my father would sink this low. This is strictly business. It has nothing to do with where you are, what you do, or what you think. I hope you all have not been irrevocably blinded by folly. I will not waste more time on pointless arguments. Wrap everything up and make preparations to shut down at once. Ah. Why is he always like that? This is quite the misfortune, but there's nothing we can do. That's it for today, everyone. Let's clean up. I'll go talk to them again tomorrow. <sighs> the storms that come out of the blue are always the hardest to deal with.
sorry. I invited you thinking this was going to be a happy occasion. I didn't know that things would turn out like this. There's no need to apologize, Nilu. No one could have seen this coming. Oh, Paimon just wishes she could have at least gotten to the food. Is what that guy said true? The Academia has already given you many warnings? Yeah, I guess you could say that. They've always seen us as being meaningless. Knowledge is king in Sumeru, and their pursuit of it leaves no room for the arts. But if that's all it is, there's also no reason to go so far as to demolish the theater. After Inaya ran away from home, I brought her here to Zubair Theater. She rarely talks about her family. All I know is that she didn't get along with them. I never expected it to blow up like this. If you did nothing wrong, then there's no reason to listen to the Academia, right? Nahida? Uh, you mean Lesser Lord Kusanali? She'd probably help if she knew what was going on. No matter how nasty the Academia could get, surely they can't win against Lesser Lord Kusanali. No, 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 no. I wasn't doubting her ability. I just feel like we shouldn't bother her with such a trivial problem. Plus, if the Dendro Archon were to intervene, then it wouldn't feel like our victory was earned. That's true. Who cares? Let's just take him in a fight! Ah, uh, that's true. I'll try to think of something. We can't just let everyone suffer in a perpetual state of fear and uncertainty. What to do? What to do? Can you pretend to shut down, but secretly continue to hold your show somewhere else? Or we could go through a list of customers and try to see if anyone in there might be willing to help out. Uh, that also doesn't sound like it'll work. A debate? Huh. Well, scholars do love to use them to solve their problems, but how would that work in this case? Oh, if we can prove to Inaya's father that the Academia's position doesn't hold water, then they won't have a reason to demolish the theater! I see. Defeating him in a debate. It's a good idea, but which one of us could hope to win against a researcher? Huh? Me? No, 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 no. I'm the literal worst at arguments. I can't debate. Nilu, you are only so stressed out right now because you care so much about protecting the theater. I... This theater holds a special meaning in all of our hearts. It's irreplaceable. But I just don't know. Can I really take on such a huge responsibility? Paimon will help too. You feel a lot more confident after doing some prep work. Believe in yourself. Thanks, you two. All right. I've decided. Even though I may fail, I'll do my very best for everyone's sake. That's our Nilu. We're rooting for you. Okay. Let's head back and tell everyone what we came up with. <laughs> Trying to best the Academia in a debate is attempting the impossible. If you really want to try, I won't stop you. It's not like our situation can get any worse. I don't think it's entirely hopeless. To Sharif, Nilu's approach will come off as naive, but that kind of frankness is exactly what they lack the most. Things might turn out differently from what you expect. I am in favor of such a romantic feat. No playwright will turn down a compelling underdog story. Sure, in fiction, but I'm not sure how well that will translate to reality. Uh, I'm not saying that I don't support you, Nilu. If you need my help, just say the word. Anything is better than just standing aside and watching the theater get demolished. I'm also pitching in. 
Let's show the Academia that we have some fight in us! Thank you, everyone. I feel a lot less nervous with your support. Not to rain on your parade. But my father is a real hard guy to deal with. He's erudite, meticulous, demanding, and exceedingly familiar with rigorous logic. It'll be extremely difficult to beat him in a debate. You all already knew that. But you just didn't want to hurt Nilu's feelings. When all said and done, aren't you hurting her just the same? That's enough, Inaya! <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, I've ruined the mood. I just can't force myself to expect a positive outcome. Nilu shouldn't have to push herself for the sake of an impossible goal. Yeah! It's way too early to give up! You're right, Inaya. We're up against the Academia. Everyone knows that they're very powerful. Being skeptical might actually be the more normal response, but I still want to try. I'm reluctant to just let Zubair Theater go. And it's not just me. I think everyone else here feels the same way. If we're unhappy, we should speak up and let our voices be heard. Say what's on your mind, and do what you think should be done. If we fail after that, then at least we won't have any regrets. I mean, after all, the only thing we can control right now is our choice at this very moment. I understand what you're trying to say. I also have my own intense feelings of anger and regret. Then, could I trouble you to tell your father about our plan for a debate? You can still get in touch with your family, right? Yes, I can. Then, please help us pass on my request. I've never participated in a debate, and truth be told, I'm still not really confident in myself. But since we've decided on a debate, I'll do my best to prepare for it. I'll gather everyone's thoughts and let them be known to all during the debate. I, by myself, definitely don't have enough wisdom to beat your father. But what about the entire theater combined? Then we should have a chance, right? Right. That's right, Miss Nilu! Beat the bad guy! Justice will prevail! Make him eat dirt! <laughs> you two. We aren't getting into a fight, but thank you for your encouraging words. I'll do my best. Well said back there, Nilu. I felt that I might have said a bit too much. Anyway, we better start preparing. <laughs> Mr. Zubair, we're trying to put together a list of arguments that might be useful. Any ideas? It won't be difficult to explain our position. They're in the wrong, and they know it. I have meticulously managed this theater's affairs for years, and I have abided by every procedure and obtained every permit. I did all of that to protect ourselves if something like this were to occur. I didn't expect them to disregard the rules altogether. Yes, I know. But anyone who's staying at the theater is one of us. If I can't even protect the members of the theater from outside pressure, then I have failed in my duty as a manager. In summary, you need sufficient confidence and strict adherence to the rules. At least for now, they don't have the authority to demolish the theater. As long as you double down on that point and force them to concede it, you'll gain an advantage. All right, got it. <sighs> I've seen many situations like this before. The Academia sure likes to get its nose into everyone's business. While you prepare for the debate, I will also prepare the theater for the potential aftermath. It's best to prepare for the worst outcome. Once you're done chatting, do me a favor and tell our customers that we're canceling all of our shows. Do we really have to? Right now, no one's in the right frame of mind to perform. I have to consider both our staff and our customers. This is the only way. Nilu, you are incredible. With your talent and youth, you had the least to lose out of all of us. And yet you were still the first to take a stand. I've never thought about leaving your theater, Mr. Zubair. I truly love this place, and I want to keep dancing here. 
I also want to keep dancing with everyone else. You're becoming more and more like her. Do your best. We'll do all that we can, and leave the rest to fate. Hey! My teacher. She was an excellent dancer, but she's retired now. When the day comes, I'll get my friends and the theater's customers to come and support Nilu. If anything goes wrong, I'll have them scream and shout and drown out whatever Sharif says. Uh, I can't do that? <sighs> Fine, I'll think of something else. I didn't expect you all to challenge the Academia. That reminded me of my younger years. Back then, I feared nothing and no one, and I was always charging into the most dangerous of places. I can't do things like that anymore, but those were some of the best times of my life. Sorry. If the theater really ends up getting demolished, then you, Soreen, and Abi will all... It's all right. There's no need to think such heavy thoughts. Even if the building gets demolished, its people will still all be here. Have faith in the resilience of an adventurer. We can always figure something out. But won't you have regrets if things just come to an abrupt end? It'd be like when you were forced to stop adventuring. Ah, oh, so that's what you were worrying about. Relax. I've had a lot of experience with regret. Things are painful at first, but as they say, time heals all wounds. Look at us now. Serene and Abi are happy. And Serene has also just passed his theater exam. He can start acting soon. He was thrilled because he can soon perform on the same stage as you. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for our past struggles. And would Serene have become a happier person? That's hard to say. Are you trying to make us feel better? Yes, but I truly do mean what I say. Being here at the theater has taught me an important lesson. The most important thing about an experience is how you choose to interpret it. I can choose to believe that my life ended with my husband's death. Or I can choose to believe that it was a blessing in disguise for Serene and Abi. Similarly, even if this theater disappears, a new beginning might just be around the corner. Good and bad are all human-made concepts. It all depends on how we choose to see things. You have a point. Nilu. I know how important Zubair Theater is to you. But you don't have to be so nervous. We're all here with you. The theater won't go down so easily. Thank you, Miss Raykar. No need to thank me. If anything, you inspired me with your bravery. You might have what it takes to become an excellent adventurer. Y you're too kind. All right. I gotta cheer up. I can't waste everyone's words of encouragement. <sighs> I feel a lot better. <laughs> Good. My children and I will be cheering you on at the debate. Paimon doesn't really want to talk to him. So, you've already developed some prejudices against me. And to think... I was just about to put forward a suggestion. Oh! Paimon will listen to that! Although, I know not if you have a new answer to my previous question. Now seems like an appropriate time to revisit it. What do you think is the meaning of art? Oh, this again? We probably do need to tackle this question if we want to prove the value of the arts. I don't know how to explain it. But all I know is that when my performance makes the audience happy, I also become very happy. Does that count as a meaning? You answered him so seriously. Careful, Nilu, this guy's ramblings never make any sense. No, no. Nilu's answer far surpasses yours. And it is close to my own. The meaning of art comes not from its creators, but from its audience. In other words, only art that can be appreciated by others will impart its essence and value upon the minds of its audience. This is something that the Academia can never understand. I once pursued the mastery of art, much like how a researcher would chase wisdom and knowledge. However, the more of a connoisseur I became, the less I felt I understood. 
I began to question what it truly meant for art to be understood at all. I found that I could comprehend even the most complex and sophisticated of works, and yet somehow that provided me with little solace. I remained even perplexed about this conundrum until I visited this theater and watched one of Nilu's performances. It was that life-changing? Everyone here had a joyous part in the overall experience. The actors upon the stage basked in the love of their audience, while those in the house immersed themselves in the wondrous ambiance. In all honesty, from a purely critical point of view, the performances here are exceedingly average. Hey, don't say something like that. But what bewildered me was how despite the performance's middling quality, they captivated their whole audience. They captivated even me. I realized then that I had walked the wrong road. The mastery of art was never what I truly wanted. I left the so-called frontiers of artistic research and came to this theater. For this is where I can finally find what I seek. Art will no longer be a castle in the sky. Whether it be inspiring or entertaining, art must be appreciated by others to confer value. If art cannot accomplish that, then it is meaningless. When you put it that way, Mr. Zubair and I refuse to follow the Academia's orders to change our shows for a similar reason. To put it simply, we were afraid that our shows would lose their meaning if people couldn't understand them. I once stood in the spotlight. But I relinquished fame and acclaim for the freedom I enjoy today. I care not for where my feet may take me next. But Nilu, you need to remember one thing. You already stand upon the finest stage there is. And that is a rare gift that should never be taken for granted. You cannot give it up. Not even to the Academia. I understand. Thank you for your words of encouragement, Mr. Kasani. Dust the cobwebs away from the eyes of those scholars. He really seemed to care a lot about the theater. Once you get to know him, you'll realize that he... Wow. Hyman didn't... You're here. Is the theater actually closing? He's been worried sick for a while now. He wouldn't stop talking the whole way back. H hey, you two. Uh, what exactly happened? Did someone come down from the academia? Yes. He told us that we have to shut down the theater within 30 days, and that it's going to be demolished. What the heck? That came with no warning. <sighs> They're messing with us again. Don't tell me you'll have to listen to him. Come on. You know the answer to that. Yeah, it is a direct order from the Academia. There's no need to worry, though. I'm preparing for a public debate with the Academia. If I win, we might be able to overturn things and change their minds. Really? That's terrific. You have my full support, no doubt about that. Mine too! So what was their excuse, anyway? They still not a fan of the theater's program? Yeah. Something like that. Good thing they have the power to make rash decisions about things they don't even understand, huh? Yeah, they need to touch more grass, not books. Exactly. They want to look down on us? <laughs> we'll look down on them first. Don't worry. Everyone here has your back. The Academia's recklessness won't get them any praise. Right. They might think that some forms of knowledge are more valuable than others, but everyone can equally appreciate art. If they don't believe that, Send them my way. I got them beat on this subject. Maybe you can prepare some questions on the details of dance performance to make things harder for them at the debate. Hmm. Sounds like a good idea. Maybe that's something I should do. Ignore him. He's joking. Just do things your way. No matter what, we will always support you. Thank you all so much. Your understanding and support make me feel a lot better. There are always more solutions than problems. If you need help during the debate, just shout and the entire Grand Bazaar will be- <laughs> Gotta show them who has the people's support. I feel like the pieces are starting to fall into place. <laughs>